Welcome to our Love to Tell a Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Ralph Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. This podcast is for the first Sunday of Christmas, which uh, falls on December 29th, 2024. And uh, we're continuing uh, with the um, uh, incarnation story uh, around the birth and the baby Jesus. And uh, we're continuing in Luke chapter 2, and in many ways following up very much with what uh, Ralph and Catherine uh, gave us uh, last week. Uh, I just want to point out, uh, Catherine reminded us of the Davidic promise that we had talked about earlier in the year uh, as we read through Samuel. Um, The prophet Anna is actually bearing witness to that in verse 38. Uh, At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. That's that's that promised Messiah, that promised Christ. And um, the other piece that was set up for us uh, by Ralph, I kind of tried to emphasize that again as I read verse 38, was uh, at that moment she came and began to praise God. And uh, the familiar words that we have um, from Simeon is also taken uh, 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 almost as a song, uh, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. Um, if uh, Since I've acknowledged my colleagues, I'll acknowledge myself in this storytelling mode, um, because what we have here are two uh, older um, uh, members of uh, the House of Israel. Uh, sometimes we forget that in the Christmas expressions, uh, that the reason that the children get to celebrate this story is because the previous generation has been holding to it with hope. And so here's a place for us to include uh, uh, the voice of some of uh, the older generation in our congregations, because that's exactly who Luke points out in Simeon and in Anna. They, uh, Simeon has, he knows that he's going to see God's promised one before he dies. And his spirit bears witness that this little baby is the one that they've been waiting for. And Mary and Joseph are still amazed. And I hope this year we are still amazed too. Thank you, Joy. Yeah, that that witness of the older generation, right? The ones who have been waiting, both Simeon and Anna, for uh, for their whole lives, really, for the fulfillment of God's promises. Uh, I just always... Uh, uh, that I love that image, right? Uh, that that scene of Simeon and Anna, uh, both recognizing God's promises fulfilled in this in this baby. Uh, I just wanted to add um, that uh, that Mary and Joseph are good Jews here. <laughs> Uh, yes. Luke, the Gospel of Luke uh, emphasizes again and again that Jesus is Jewish, uh, and I think you know, especially in our age of rising anti-Semitism, it's good to emphasize Jesus's Jewishness. Uh, And uh, in particular, they're obeying the law as given in Leviticus chapter 12. So so the text, Luke says, when the eighth day came, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And then when the time came for their purification, uh, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Uh, And they offered uh, a sacrifice, according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So just a a couple of things to note with that. Um, Indeed, uh, in uh, in Leviticus chapter 12, uh, verse 3, it says, On the eighth day the flesh of uh, his foreskin shall be circumcised, that is, the newborn boy. Uh, and then immediately after that, the, the mother is uh, um, has a time of purification. Now, as I think I've said on this podcast before, you know, being clean or unclean is not the same as being sinful or, uh, you know, or holy. Uh, normals in it, just living your life would make you ritually unclean. So giving yes. birth is one of those things that makes 
a woman unclean, uh, and there's debate about you know why that is, but uh, it's not. It, it, it's a joyful thing, right? It's a thing to be uh, to be celebrated. Uh, and after 33 days, she comes to the temple and offers a sacrifice, uh, kind of as a like entering back fully into the land of the living, into the world of the living. Of course, uh, even today, and especially in the ancient world, birth was a, a very perilous thing uh, for women, mm-hmm. right? Uh, men, many women died in childbirth. And that's one of the theories about why a woman is unclean, right? She's kind of coming into that liminal space between life and death. Uh, mm-hmm. And so when she's fully back in the land of the living, then uh, that's signified by her uh, sacrifice at the temple. I don't know if that's the reason behind it, but I, I like that explanation. It makes sense to me. Uh, but the other thing I like about this is it it says very, um, uh, very, Clearly, in Luke, that uh, they offer a uh, sacrifice, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. This is one of the things in Leviticus, and this again is in Leviticus 12, but also in earlier chapters, that, uh, you know, if you're sacrifice, if you're making a sacrifice, a, a bull is the, you know, is the highest sacrifice. And then if you can't afford a bull, you bring a sheep or a goat. And if you can't afford that, then you bring two turtle doves or two pigeons. So we, uh, it seems to be the case that Mary and Joseph, uh, that's all they can afford. So uh, I, I like the fact that there is provision made in the law for everyone to participate in worship, for everyone to participate in the in this uh, you know the the sacrificial system, including those who are too poor to bring you know a, a, a sheep or a goat or a bull. Uh, and so Mary and Joseph, they uh, they are law. They they observe the law. Um, they celebrate uh, the birth of their son uh, by bringing him to the temple and dedicating him, which we will see uh, in next week's. Uh, uh, we'll see a similar scene in next week's uh, narrative lectionary selection. But uh, yeah, just a, a a beautiful scene of of celebration of uh, of tradition uh, and of promises uh, recognized and uh, and celebrated. If I may jump in, Ralph. Uh, yeah, I was going to emphasize that same thing. Oh, go ahead. I was worried that you were going to go in a different uh, uh, direction, so hopefully this this will stay in, in the same lane. Um, uh, I like the fact, especially now when you have a baby and you go home the same day or you have surgery and you go home the same day, I like the fact that the God who said it's a commandment for you to rest specifically singles out the reality of being a mom and the risk of life that and is a new there mom, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, and a new mom and basically says, um, give her a break. And that's <laughs> one of the laws. <laughs> yeah. I like that too. I like that too. What I, what I was going to emphasize is um, that again, the pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons that uh, it, it appears to be the case that, um, Jesus comes from a poor family, emphasizing mm-hmm. and contrasting that again with emperor, the, yeah. the emperor, yeah. you know, is moving yeah. people around like pawns and a chessboard throughout, mm-hmm. throughout his, and actually the word for people is here, economy or the world uh, in the previous reading. And so we've seen this over and over again. Remember at the start of the book of Exodus, where does, uh, where does God move? Well, he starts with these two. Uh, these two barren um, midwives, where does God move, you know, uh, through the birth of Samuel? God has moved over and over again, uh, not primarily through the powerful, but primarily when God starts a redemptive act, it is from the lowly. And that Mm -hmm. continues here uh, with Jesus. The other thing in this passage I wanted to talk about is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Both Simeon and Anna uh, are instruments of the Holy Spirit. It says about Simeon that the Holy Spirit rested upon him and revealed to him that he would not see death before he had seen the Messiah. Interesting um, little way of putting that. And then also that Anna is a prophet. Reminder again that the Bible attests to the ministry of women uh, throughout and that um, Anna is of great age and she worshiped every day in the temple and as a prophet, she, of course, prophesies in the Spirit. Just an important reminder that the Spirit in Luke-Acts doesn't first show up 
at Pentecost. The Spirit shows up in a different way at Pentecost, but has been active throughout and is active today in your life. I wanted to note, since I talk so much about the Jewishness of Jesus, that uh, uh, that there's a, a word of hope for the Gentiles here too. So, uh, in Simeon's song or in Simeon's prayer, he says, "Master, now you're dis- dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles." and for glory to your people, Israel, right? So uh, from earliest times, right, in uh, Genesis 12, when Abraham is first called to go to a land he's never seen, God says, all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. This too, I think, is a is a culmination of that promise, right? That in Jesus, the uh, descendant of, uh, of Abraham, uh, there is not only salvation for God's people, the Jews, but also a light for revelation to the Gentiles. Uh, so, uh, and we, uh, and, and I assume most of you listening, uh, are part of that group that are grafted onto the root of Israel. So we we uh, we give praise to God for that. And just to not forget uh, that last line in this particular portion uh, is is just just the the fullness of the gift uh, that you lifted up, uh, Ralph, of the Spirit, uh, the presence of the Spirit in all of these things for us today, Catherine, as well as lived out for them then. I Love to Tell the Story is a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The narrative lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.